Today, almost every industrial plant uses compressed air in some form or fashion, and from the benefits it's easy to see why. Pneumatic tools cost around half of the battery or motor competition. Pneumatic tools are lighter than the competition. Pneumatic tools don't spark, which can be necessary depending on the working location. Compressed air today powers hand drills, cyclone chillers, pneumatic transportation tubes, aerators, presses, plastic extruders, valve switches, cleaning air blasters, paint guns, and so much more. In order to facilitate this load, most manufacturing plants will have a compressor or general maintenance room to hold all the machinery required for compressed air. In general, plants consume so much compressed air that it has been given the nickname of the fourth utility in many facilities and energy studies. Screw compressors are a very specific style of compressor that create continuous airflow by forcibly displacing the air. Between the two screws, a cavity is formed that sucks the air into the screw manifold. Once the cavity reaches its maximum volume, it closes off from the inlet section and the cavity begins to turn and shrink, forcing the air out the other side. Compressors have extremely high operating costs. A compressor system for an average size facility will cost tens of thousands of dollars per year. For large plants, that cost might climb into hundreds of thousands per year. Improving efficiency by even a percent can result in thousands of dollars saved per year. When analyzing compressor efficiency, there are several different ways to estimate efficiency. We talked with Tony Taylor about the different theoretical efficiencies of an air compressor. Tony works for Ingersoll Rand as a compressor analysis for efficiency and improvement. We talked a little bit before about different types of efficiencies when measuring air compressors and they're like theoretical. So a lot of theoretical efficiencies. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I guess I'm specifically looking at like polyotropic compression and uh, I guess it'd be isothermal compression. Yeah. So there's kind of three out there that people like to cling to. And technically they're there's even more efficient versions of polytropic if you want to really smear some <laughs> lines. But the way it works, if you looked at a PV diagram, you're of course always trying to reduce the area under the curve to become the most efficient. And if you're to draw a line effectively, an isothermal would be the best form of compression. An isothermal is the idea that air coming in doesn't gain any heat as it's gaining pressure before it leaves the system, which requires some intense amount of cooling. The next idea would be something like isentropic compression, adiabatic and reversible, of course. Adiabatic mm -hmm. meaning any heat generated, any heat loss, whatever, no heat is being transferred during the compression process, which means that's a huge temperature gain, no longer isothermal, of course. And then on top of that, unless you have a super insulated air end, not to mention the frictional losses and stuff that make it non-reversible, you're, no, you're never going to be isentropic. So your next thing is you get into polytropic compression or polytropic efficiencies of compression, which is just saying, okay, I try to be isentropic. Where did I really land? Am I 85, 95, 65, whatever it might be. Um, but technically, if you, you want to smear the lines, and the reason why I'm saying you can have more efficient than isothermal is technically you could bring in, say, 150 degree air that's really hot, and you could cool it to be 100 degrees before it leaves. That's mm -hmm. technically more efficient than ice. There are two main types of screw compressors, oil-free screw compressors and lube-injected screw compressors. In the lube-injected screw compressors, the oil offers cooling on the air as it is being compressed, which means the temperature of the compressed air is better controlled. Alternatively, in oil-free compressors, there is little to no cooling on the air and the temperature in the screw rises. As Tony said, there are two main types of theoretical compressor models. The first is isentropic polytropic compression. This follows the adiabatic compression laws of air, which factor in heat of compression. The heat of compression is based on the change in specific volume and is characterized by the polytropic equation PV to the N equals C. For air, N equals 1.4.
The hotter the air in the compressor gets, the higher the specific volume becomes and the more work the compressor must use to continue to compress the air. The area under the volume pressure graph represents the required work by the compressor. Because this theoretical compressor model doesn't include cooling, it more closely resembles oil-free screw compressors. The other type of theoretical compressor model is isentropic isothermal compression. In this form of compression, all heat generated by heat of compression is rejected to a heat exchanger. This allows the temperature of the compressed air to remain constant while the pressure increases. Less heat in the compressed air means less specific volume, and less specific volume means the compressor can compress air with less required work. As before, the area under the volume pressure graph represents the amount of work required by the compressor. Because heat rejection is included in this theoretical compressor model, it more closely resembles a lube-injected screw compressor. An actual lube-injected screw compressor would not be able to completely reject all heat generated, so it would fall somewhere between the two theoretical models. Further analysis can be done for lube-injected screw compressors. Analysis on exergene destruction through a heat exchanger can be performed on the heat transfer from the compressing air into the oil. As heat is transferred from the air to the oil, a certain amount of exergy is destroyed across this heat exchanger. The heat leaving the hot air destroys a certain amount of exergy, shown in blue, while the heat entering the cooler oil creates a certain amount of exergy, shown in orange. The net exergy of the two processes is the amount of exergy destroyed. Exergy loss across this type of heat exchanger can be represented as the area under a curve with the normalized temperature and the heat flux as its axes, as shown. In this case, because there is heat generation across the screw, the exergy destruction looks slightly slow. This exergy destroyed refers to the loss in potential energy of the exhaust heat, but in the case of screw compressors, excess exergy destruction also represents a direct relation to a decrease in compressor efficiency.